Out here with the birds this morning. This is a 40-foot gooseneck. And we are building the biggest honking tiny house I have ever seen. Here on the roof, and we are putting on the metal roof. It's our panel. I decided to do this just because I've done it before. I didn't want to have to learn how to do the um, concealed fastener staining seam roof. So, anyways, um, just to point out some things and putting down a nice straight line. It doesn't really matter whether your roof is straight right here because the ridge cap that's going to go over it will cover up any abnormalities you have along here. But it really is important that the face of your sheet is straight all the way down. So when you um, measure this, you're gonna measure, at least this is what I do, um, I measure whatever my length of the, of the actual sheet is going to be and then I add on two inches for overhang. I, I like having at least two inches of overhang and if a gutter ever gets put on here, uh, you know, it'll still drain into the gutter. But, um, so first thing you do is you put down your, your eave edge drip, and I've got the corners folded over here just for a little added protection. Um, then the, uh, the gable end trim or the rake edge trim will come over here. So we're gonna put, we're gonna take this screw out and that screw out, and we're gonna put um, along here um, uh, some of the butyl tape to water seal underneath the, the edge of the trim so that when water tries to get in, it can't but I made sure and measured, that's why it's offset here. I didn't just butt this up to the edge and start going for it. So just make sure and do that and measure and make sure that wherever your um, gable edge, the rake tri trim is gonna go, that it's gonna terminate on a nice flat surface so you have a good surface to screw onto to get a weather tight seal. Um, every lap is held, like all these R, R panel laps, they're all held with butyl tape. Butyl tape is going all the way down the seam. All of them are gonna be like that. Um, the manufacturer of this R panel says that you should use a lap screw on the laps. A bunch of other people have said don't do that. Um, so I guess it's just kind of up to personal preference what you want to do. I haven't decided yet. I think I might not use the lap screws because if you get a screw close enough to this edge and there's butyl tape here, wind driven rain can't get under here because this screw is pushing down here. Even if it was hurricane force wind, the, the likelihood of this bending up is, is next to nil. Do your research before doing anything. Um, so that's what I was getting to at the very beginning when I first started off was you see over here, I've got two by four and I just measured two inches and just made a little mark. And I screwed my two by four in so that the edge of my fascia was with the edge of my mark. And then I just have this string just pulled extremely taut and I just have all of my panels all lined up with this string all the way down. So that means no matter if my walls are a little buckled or my, my, uh, my joists are a little off, you know, by a quarter of an inch or whatever, this will fix any uneve unevenness in the wall. So that looking at it from the bottom, it's gonna look, you know, perfectly straight across here. So again, on this side, it's the same thing. Just two inches, and now we're gonna move it down to this. Up here on the roof also, if you'll notice, I've got horizontal furring strips going. You're supposed to attach fasteners every three feet. On here I've got an, an extra one here, and I've got some extras on the side here uh, for attaching the gable edge trim on a little tighter. It, any, basically anywhere along the edge, that's where your wind's really going to be hitting. If you've got your panel fastened in the middle, great. I mean, you're supposed to do that every three feet. But along the edge, make sure you have enough fasteners in along the edge because that's where the wind really picks up on these things. If you don't have the edge fastened, then the wind will grab it and eventually work the screw loose. So make sure your edges are fastened correctly. But I've got these horizontal furring strips and then you'll notice there's little cutouts in the furring strips. Uh, that's for air. So basically down here I've got a furring strip under here to lift it up to the proper height. This is one solid furring strip all along here. So basically the air is going to travel up over the edge of that trim and come underneath here and work its way up to the ridge cap. You just want to seal everything out from wind driven rain, especially on a roof pitch that's this light. This is only a 212 pitch. 
um, you just have to be aware of water getting in. Bugs is another issue. Bugs and whatever else might want to make nests up here. So you're trying to seal it out from, from pest and from water damage. Just so you can see the strips I'm using, it's just called multi-vent closures. Looks like this. They just uh, conform to whatever your, uh, your panel might be so they can go above the panel or below it. Um, and they'll just smush down to whatever. I don't, I don't really like them. You've got to use more screws along the edge to keep it down because it pushes the panel up. So um, you might want to look at some other products, but this is all that was available to me locally as far as a vented closure. They do have uh, the non-vented closures that conform to the shape of the R panel, but I don't really like those either. And we want this roof to be vented at least somewhat so that it can, can cool down easier. So that's another reason why we're going with white, is so that it doesn't hold on to heat as much and won't pass heat on to the structure as easily. Asphalt shingles might be 170 degrees. Um, paint them white, it suddenly drops to like 120, 130 degrees. Go with white. Uh, powder coated uh, steel and it'll be even lower than that. The idea is to keep the temperature of the roof emitting, reflecting as much of this hot uh, southern sun as possible. In the north you want the reverse of that. You want the darkest, hottest, <laughs> the worst uh, S SRI value, solar reflective index, and solar reflectiveness and solar emittance. So do your research on that. Kind of windy, but they're being very careful, thankfully. Out here with the birds this morning. This is a 40 foot gooseneck. And we are building the biggest honking tiny house I have ever seen. Look at Logan go. Maybe he'll pull it back out and then push yeah. it back. Yeah, you're, you're not going to make it. you got to come this way. Let's quit. Lay over here. Yeah. 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 Logan learning how to move his house. <laughs> <laughs> I love that everyone's got their camera <laughs> Nobody's helping. <laughs> Holy crap. Thank you. 
Wow, I'm so impressed. Holy crap. It goes down the hill. <laughs> It made that it. Stabilize the hillside, Sal. <laughs> walking it down I'm that way. So if you just keep walking it that way, then it's on right now. We're in the back. Look at that way. That way. And I'm going to give you a tour of our tiny house. It's super cute. So we'll go in through the front door. We've got a really nice um, big extension deck that Katie built us in addition to our tiny deck. We've also got some pumpkins. And I'm just gonna oop, take my shoes off and we'll go in. And here are my parents. They're visiting for the week, just sitting oh. in the window nook. So here's our kitchen with my kitty on the counter. And you can see we've got some fresh veggies all the way from California and our tiny stove. So we've got a bunch of storage space under the countertop, which is bamboo. And we got it from Bamboo Revolutions here in Portland. And then we also have some storage space up here, which is really handy. And then we're going to come circle around and you can see her potty. So the potty is awesome. This flooring right here actually lifts up and under this is like a super tiny little tub. And so it's kind of like a wet bath, which is why we have this corrugated steel here. So we just really need to get like a shower curtain so that we don't get the wood wet, but that's, we don't shower here every day. And then we've got a sliding door that it's kind of hard to see you guys. I'm sorry. It's a tiny space. So you see the door kind of slid and right here, there's a hole. We're going to um, probably put a mirror here or some stained glass. And then here's our closet, tiny wardrobe that Logan and I share. Plenty of storage and then more storage on the bottom, like bike bags and shoes, our skivvies, you know, and then the parents. And we've also got storage up here, which is great. And all of this lighting is totally natural right now. I don't have any lights on in the house. Typically, we don't turn lights on during the day because the natural light's so amazing, um, which is partly the reason why we got these amazing French doors. We wanted to feel like we were kind of living outside, and I think it's going to be a great addition during summertime. And so in the background, you can see our bookshelf, which is really not very full and that makes me happy and then we're gonna climb up the ladder sorry for the wobbliness and you can see our loft and here's my other kitty Christy and our amazing skylight and that's it I mean it's pretty tiny but it's super cozy and mom what do you say about the tiny house it's bigger than I thought and very comfortable. See, there you go. So that's all for it's now. It's doable. Yeah, see, even my mom says it's doable. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. Um, and I hope you guys have a great week.